Hello everybody and welcome to Fleming Film Talk with me, Robbie Fleming, and joining me today is Justin Doyle, as always. Hello, Justin. Hey, Rob, what's going on, pal? Uh, not much, not much. The last movie I watched in cinema was uh, Mission Impossible, and uh, I want to talk about spy films. That was the last movie I saw as well, it was Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, spy movies. We're going to count down our five favorite spy movies. Yes. Sounds fun to me. Um, yes. yes. What do you think makes a great spy movie out of curiosity? Well, you have to be uh, hiding from someone trying to find them. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I most of these usually have action in it so i'm yes. really happy about that because action's you know one of my favorite uh movies to uh yes. partake in yes um, genres. it's one of my favorite genres as well in mo in all of these have action in some way shape or form yes. and I'm, all five mine have action yes and uh definitely some uh some spying as well yes <laughs> Uh, all right. Do you want to go first? Yes, yes. So going back to Mission Impossible, uh, the spy franchise that I love, my favorite film in this franchise is The Fourth in School and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Ooh. Which is my number Tell five. us all about it. So in this one, uh, the MIF get disbanded and Ethan and his team have to go on the run. He is back with Simon Pegg, but he's also joined by Paula Patton and uh, Jeremy Renner. Mm -hmm. And uh, during this movie, uh, Tom Cruise wanted to do a, an awesome stunt, like he always does with these movies. So he decided to climb the biggest tower in Dubai. <laughs> How'd that work out for him? Uh, well, he lost one of his gloves as he was like hanging on from the tower. But I don't know. I don't know how many. There must have been thousands of safety men when he was doing that. Yeah, uh, he is a true action star. He likes to do his own stunts. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess this was his. Uh, his way of continuing, you know, to kill it. Cause, uh, I, I, I think I, was it the second one where he's doing the mountain climbing without any ropes? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's scary. That is some scary stuff right there. And, uh, I think that he's gone above and beyond each movie after that, because there's been some intense, uh, stunts and crazy situations, but yeah, we have, uh, Paul and Patton and, and Jeremy Renner in this one. Um, but, uh, their, their team was implicated in the bombing of Kremlin yeah. and his new team go on rogue to, uh, clear their organization's name directed by one of your favorite, uh, animated directors, right? Yes. Uh, Brad Bird. And this is his best live action movie. His best live action movie, huh? Yes. Does Tomorrowland's a bit of a ball. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, and and just not over. It's not a great movie overall, right? No, no. Uh, Leia Sadu is also in this uh, movie. Yeah, she has become very popular lately. She was just in Crimes yes. of the Future from last year. Yes, and uh, my child, Nian Vix, plays the main antagonist. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's part of the Kremlins. Right? Yes. Josh Holloway is also in this movie. He was in Lost. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Simon Pegg's back. Oh, yeah, this Ben is... Rames makes a cameo as well. We, we can't we can't do a Mission Impossible movie about Ben Rames, so we're just going to have him have a, have, a, have a cameo. Yes. Yeah, Jeremy Renner's kind of stepped in as the... I mean, he was uh, very hot at this time in 2011. This is hot off the heels of, uh, of the Her Locker, right? Yes, I'm set up for him being in the Avengers the year afterwards. Awesome. Yeah, this is a great film, great action. Uh, and, 
yeah um it's the fourth one right yes the fourth it goes, one. It goes three mi3 then goes protocol then rogue nation and then fallout and then now dead reckoning yes yes definitely definitely and i well, feel de like after these ones this is where they get like really better in terms of quality yeah but we will we will never have a villain like uh like philip seymour hoffman or sean harris or sean harris doesn't look like this movie won any of your fleming awards no sadly not but uh 7.4 on imdb uh and i'm sure it did well at the theater hold on one second i'm not spelling this name right <laughs> uh <clears throat> here we go box office was a budget of 145 million worldwide gross 694.7 million blee that's a goot uh 93 percent are on tomatoes with a 76 percent audience score i don't know why the audience didn't like it but this is that one where he did the gloves on the window yeah that's insane so that's pretty much is just doing the uh the rock climbing but this is on a, a skyscraper building i don't know yes. what's what he's doing i don't know why he does the things that he does but keep on doing it because we love it and we'll go see it <clears throat> yes yes i wonder what he's got prepared for part two well, uh, it's, it's one of the things that I hate about knowing that it's going to be a part one is like, you know, it's not going to have an ending and that we have to wait for, you know, the next part. Um, uh, this but, one did have more of an ending than Fast X and Spider-Verse. It wasn't a proper cliffhanger. That's true. Yeah. It's just, a, yeah, letting you know it's a, a continuation's coming. Yeah. Uh well, there you have it. That's your number five. Yes. <clears throat> uh, all right. Well, very fitting because I also have a Mission Impossible at my number five. Uh, I believe you just can't have a spy, uh, you know, list without having a Mission Impossible be on there somewhere. Uh, this was the um, uh, sort of most recent of them before the one that just came out i had a great time in mission impossible fallout which is my second uh, favorite mission impossible movie yeah this uh this had a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat very close yes. up uh, fighting that really you know made you suffocate and uh you know uh, just what's gonna happen you know yeah. you can just get stabbed yeah. or shot in these little situations but yes. uh, i noticed there was more of a quality of action in this like there was more action rather than just him doing one big action piece right yep um i just really enjoyed um you know uh henry cavill in this and i thought that uh you know the him and the motorcycle scenes were really Im impressive just yeah because we we learned all about it this is the one where he broke his ankle i believe jumping from building to building yes uh, right. and yeah and they had to stop uh production but he's he's just, again like we talked about just an amazing stunt man and uh, you know the fact that he's going to put his body and life on the line is really uh you know it's interesting plus this is sort of the beginning of where we see him or where dead reckoning continued it is his relationships with women and how they go and uh, if they go and and you know sometimes your life isn't necessarily going to be uh you're not going to have one uh, if you get involved with ethan hunt but uh yeah this one also has the very very lovely uh oh what she's uh, what's her name she's the red she was in uh she was in the greatest showman in life oh rebecca <laughs> ferguson rebecca ferguson yes that's her name as ilsa uh but uh yeah henry cavill's in this sean harris like we you mentioned earlier bassett yeah. vanessa kirby this is the white widow yeah uh, a little bit of michelle monaghan alec baldwin this one's directed by Christopher McQuarrie, who also directed Dead Reckoning Part 1 and um, Part 2. And you also have Vin and Simon, because you can't do a Mission Impossible film without these two. 
Well, yeah, after, uh, was it the start of the third one, maybe? Yeah, well, Vin's been in it since day one. Well, yeah, but... Uh, Simon's been in it since since the third one. Right. Yeah, it looks like uh, Query, Christopher McQuarrie has done The Way of the Gun, and then all the rest are Tom Cruise movies, Jack Reacher, Rogue Nation, Fallout, and Dead Reckoning Part 1, and, Pro, and uh, Dead Reckoning Part 2 is in production, which will be released next year. I, he was the writer of Edge of Tomorrow and Top Gun Maverick, so we know that. Yes, uh, I prefer him as a writer, and uh, he's also won a Fleming Award as well as an Oscar for uh, The Usual Suspects, the best original screenplay. Oh, check that out. Uh, sadly, Fallout has not uh, won any of your Flemings. Doesn't look like it from 2019. 2018. Well, it's from 2018, but the 2019 are the... Or did you do it the same year it came out? I always do them like 2018, like, yeah, they came out. So Batman, the Black Times, Moon, Roma. Okay, yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 1917, Parasite. Yeah, okay, I see. Uh, well, still, no Flemings for Fallout. Uh, I really like the visuals in this. I think the stunt work was amazing. They, you know, try to up it every every time they do it, and I yes. believe they did it in Fallout. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't think they upped their game in Dead Reckoning Part 1. Uh, Apart from the motorcycle scene. Yeah, and the train scene was fun too. I mean, it just kind of felt like Uncharted. Yeah. Uh, still a great film. 7.7 .7 on IMDb. Over at the box office, we have a budget of $178 million. Worldwide gross, $791.6 million. And then uh, Rotten Tomatoes gives it 97% with an 88% audience score. Nice. Good. And what is your number four? All right, so my number four is the start of the trilogy. The trilogy with a sequel and a prequel. But nothing uh, beats uh, the original film, and that's Kingsman, The Secret Service. Good one. Tell us all about it. So we follow Gary Eggsy Ewins. He was a bit of a chav. He's like a bit of a thug, like a criminal. And he uh, gets recruited for Kingsman by Colin Firth, who, because uh, what happened was uh, Eggsy's dad uh, saved uh, Colin Firth and sacrificed himself. So it was like a forever in your debt kind of thing. So he passed on like this... Uh, this thing for uh, for for Exy to have, and and he says to call this number when when the time is right, and then obviously he becomes an agent, and he has to tackle this global threat uh, from this uh, from this uh, billionaire with a speech impediment, played by Samuel L. Jackson, <laughs> and also. Yeah. Mark Wrong and Michael Cader in this, but the but the main man is this uh, newcomer. We 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 didn't know him until this movie, and now he's a superstar, uh, Taron Egerton. Yeah, he really was able to shine in this movie. I believe the Eddie the Eagle may have come out first before this, um, so that that may have been where people had seen him. But I think it was like you know within the same year pretty much but uh, uh yeah this legend, movie legend uh, was came around the same time as well the tom hardy movie oh yeah uh but this is this movie is a ton of fun i mean it is uh it is exactly what uh what you want it's a little bit of mission impossible it's a little bit of 007 um but yeah we get a young new recruit and he just uh learns the ways of kicking ass um in this new sort of spy organization. I mean, well, not new to him, but new to us. I mean, we didn't know about the Kingsmen, right? No. Uh, um, so I think that was really cool. It's unique, it's fresh. And to be able to spawn off two more movies from it means that, uh, you know, we we're enjoying it and we're looking to see more of it, I think. Yeah. Um, did you enjoy the, the prequel and sequel? They're both 
fine. I prefer the prequel to the sequel. Yeah, but the sequel does have uh, Elton John in it. Yeah, but too much over the top action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Colin Firth, uh, Mark Strong, um, Mark Hamill. Yep. Directed by Matthew Vaughn. Do you like Matthew Vaughn? You know, uh, I like love his... Matthew Vaughn. He's a brilliant director. Yeah, I think uh, Kick Ass maybe one of his better. First class, yeah. Uh, he also did Layer Cake and Stardust, uh, Golden Circle, and Kingsman, the, the prequel. Um, so, yeah, he likes his action. Stardust is sort of uh, fantasy and not, not too much action in it, but Layer Cake is pretty damn cool. It is a cool film. Uh, he also, uh, Matthew Vaughn, was the producer on Tetris, which is that Taron Edgerton Apple TV and post. also movie. Lockstock and Snatch, so I think he's friends with Mr. Ritchie. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I love this movie. Great, great pick. Sitting at 7.7 .7 on IMD. Oh, let's see if it won. Uh, let's see if it won any Flemings over here. Let me give it a look. See, uh, Kingsman doesn't look like it. No, no, none of the Kingsman films have won, sadly. Yeah, uh, but just really good action and really fresh. Uh, 7.7 .7 on IMDb. Budget of $81 million, worldwide gross, 414.3. So, so far, it seems like people love going to the movies to see spy thrillers. 75% uh, yeah. of Rotten Tomatoes with an 84% audience score. So, the audience is liking it more than the critics, whereas the Mission Impossible movies were loved by the critics and not necessarily the fans. Yeah. Very good pick. Yeah. All right. My number four might be on your list. So we'll okay. See. We'll see. Uh, it is also the start of a sort of a franchise that happened with uh, this character. Of course, it was already a previous uh, franchise before, but this one is headed by Sir Daniel Craig, and it's his first take as James Bond in... Casino Royale from I do like this movie, but another Daniel Craig Bond film is on my list. Gotcha. Okay, so that's fantastic. We'll talk about both. Uh, this one, yeah, is after earning his uh, double O status and license to kill. We have James Bond. He sets out on his first mission to defeat a uh, private banker funding terrorists in high stakes game of poker at Casino Royale in Montenegro. We have. Uh, Mr. Mads Mikkelsen is probably one of the greatest villains <clears throat> in the franchise. Jeffrey Wright is there. Eva Green, who is uh, Vesper, who kind of yes. starts it all for uh, Mr. Bond here. Judy Dench is M, who actually crossed over from the uh, the the Pierce Brosnan franchise. Yes. Uh, and then uh, you know uh, some some people that we know their faces but don't necessarily always know their names yes. uh this one's directed by uh martin campbell and what really got me on this one is this was like hand-to-hand -hand stuff this this hand-to-hand -hand combat this really gruff up up and up close really you know using a lot of uh elbows and, and fists and, and and you know kicks and stuff and it's all within you know like a foot away from each other that was uh, different from other bond movies that we see because you know he has gadgets he has cars he has guns um but uh yeah this director really does like doing uh bond movies he does he he had uh he started off with sex thief eskimo nell and three for all uh early on in his career but then came back with uh, the first one that he did that was a 007 movie was golden eye yes. we had some fun in the mask of zorro and then vertical limit he did beyond borders with angelina jolie which did not do well came back to uh zorro with the legend of zorro and then yeah casino royale he also did uh green lantern what about that and... i bet i bet, I bet he regrets doing that 
Well, what's interesting is after that, he did movie TV movies, but then the last three movies that he did are all sort of straight to DVD movies. Uh, the Foreigner with Jackie Chan that came out in 2017, which yeah. I did enjoy. Uh, the Protege that had Maggie Q in it that came out in 2021, kind of came and went during COVID. And yeah. then uh, Memory, which came out last year, which is one of the two, three movies that uh, Liam Neeson was in. And it's always the same thing. You know, he's always trying to get his family out of trouble or something. Why so, hasn't he signed to movies with better plots? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he did Casino Royale. This is it's no, no be- Liam Neeson. Oh, Liam Neeson? No, I mean, it's his niche. Like he's stuck in his own sort of, uh, his own sort of. Um, but I like, spot I like right him in Shinder's List. I like him in Star Wars. I like him in roles that he's different in. I know, but I think once we got to uh, take him. to Taken, that's that's pretty much what it became. But uh, yeah, Casino Royale is a ton of fun. I was very trepidatious about. Um, uh, Daniel Craig becoming uh, 007, but w- after watching the movie, you can tell that he belongs as that character and how how badass he can actually be. And, you know, the, the, the girls find him easy on the eyes, so it's fun for all. Yes. Uh, we do have a couple of Flemings that this movie is one. Looks like uh, the one for best original song for You Know My Name. And uh, also one for best score, David Arnold. Yep. And that is it. Pretty good. Yep. Uh, yeah, Daniel Craig kills it as Bond. You like this movie, but you like one other. Uh, you like uh, some others more than than this yes. one. Yes. Yes. Eight point zero on IMDb with a budget of one hundred and fifty million dollars. Worldwide gross is six hundred and sixteen million. And over on Rotten Tomatoes, Eva Green was great as well. She's oh, great. she is. I just want to say one thing: if they do uh, ha- when they do this Harry Potter reboot uh, show, she should be Bellatrix, uh, Helen Bonham Carter's character. She'd be great. Well, yeah, yeah, she would be. Uh, Casino Royale is ninety-four percent on Rotten Tomatoes with a nice ninety percent audience score. You can watch it on Max. Nice. All right. My number three is kind of a fantasy s uh, spy film. It mixes a balance of the sci-fi and fantasy genre as well. Uh, this uh, director has a movie out right now, which I'm dying to see. But I really loved his last movie, Tenet. Uh, who, which director are you talking about? Christopher Nolan. Aha, yes. Tell us all about it. So, Tenet is John David Washington. He is called the protagonist. And he is trying to stop this mad Russian oligarch who wants to, dis- who wants to destroy the world the day he dies of cancer. So through time travel and time bending, he goes through to save the day. Very, very good. Uh, I what love... I love about this movie is the visuals and how Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan really, really takes us through this character's journey. And this is a uh, sort of a what some would say a Nolan lash out onto spy movies and thrillers. Yeah. Uh, kind of slapping them in the face a little bit, uh, making them seem like they're more ridiculous than they set out to be. But uh, yeah, in, in turn, he came up with a great sort of, yeah, spy espionage film. Yes. Which um, yeah, it's just so smart. And I think that, maybe it's a little too smart for some people because i i know even for me like uh on the first viewing i really loved it but i'm also was like pondering about it and then on the second viewing you kind of get it a little bit more um but uh yeah great performances from john david washington and robert pattinson um we also have uh elizabeth debecki in it yes um 
any other names that uh, uh Dimple Cap Capaldi, he played the 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 woman who dealt arms. Uh we have Michael Mark, Kane. Mark Kane has a little cameo. Uh Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh we didn't see him for a while, but then he came back. Yeah, and I mean we don't even really know that it's him until later on in the movie. Yeah, and uh oh and uh a new guy he was fresh off the boat from from yesterday, uh Himesh Patel. Nice. Uh yeah, I mean um, yeah. Nolan likes to do Martin his practical Donovan effects. As well. He's a Nolan regular, he was in Insomnia. And Kenneth Branner plays a villain. Yeah. Uh uh some may say it was a little bit over the top, but uh, I enjoyed it. This yeah. was just a big, big movie, and unfortunately, uh, COVID caught it. And, you know, it got the COVID, so it was um, sick for a while. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was just super, super interesting. Something you, you just haven't seen before. This movie goes; it's moving like this, and then once you see it this way, it's also going that way again. So you don't even know which sort of you know view you're seeing at which point and I, it was just super super smart um <clears throat> but yeah he likes his practical effects you know he really did uh blow up that 747 or he crashed it into that hangar um christopher nolan just he's just a fan of movies and and uh, uh tangible things things that you can touch uh yeah. and um yeah this this to me was a really uh really good film and it this was. is a good peak um again it didn't do too well in theaters because of covid but it still did pretty well 205 million dollars uh budget with the worldwide gross of 365.3 million you know uh oppenheimer was made for 100 million wow so i just i just find that interesting it was less than 10 and i, I feel like as you do movies you just use more well, money to do that it looked like you had more cgi oh well it had to there's like i said there's you know there was forward and backwards happening it, like it was just some insane stuff that almost doesn't make sense yeah and again some people didn't think it did uh 7.3 on imdb you can watch it on TBS if you got TBS. Do you guys have TBS over there in the UK? No. 69% uh, Rotten Tomatoes with a 76% audience score. Well, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Tanat. Uh, it won a bunch, I feel. One second, I'll get there. All right, it won for best film, best director, best supporting actor for Robert Pattinson. It also won Hoyt Van Hoytema for best cinematography, Ludwig Goransson for best score, uh, best production design, stunt team, visual effects, and that's it. Well, that's not it, because that's a lot. Is that yeah. the most that a movie's ever won? Uh, no, uh, Raiders of Lost Ark with 13 is the most. Damn! Nice. Uh, yeah, Tenet is, uh, is a great film, and that's a good pick. It's the yes. same word spelled forward as it is backwards. Yeah, Christopher Nolan is a, a great director. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, this movie also won one Oscar. For visual effects yeah it was also nominated for production which probably oppenheimer will also get nominated I, i'm hoping for, i'm hoping he gets nominated for direct this year it's possible it is possible all right this movie at my number three yeah uh also it has a, a sequel but does not live up to what came first uh 
This movie is mostly about uh, FBI agents and the U.S.-Mexico uh, border, but it's also about spies fighting wars for people. In most cases, they'll never meet, and for reasons they'll never really grasp. This movie has some great action, great tense moments, and just amazing uh, acting. It's from the prolific, great director, Denis Villeneuve, and this is Sicario. Great choice. Yeah, this is an FBI agent. She's enlisted by the government task force to aid in the escalating war against drugs at the border area between U.S. and Mexico. And one of the greatest scenes in cinema history is the tent scene at the border. And uh, you just never know what's going to happen until it does, and it will blow your mind. I have been on the U.S.-Mexico border a few times, and it is pretty scary. You just never know what's going to happen. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it with my eyes, but I've never crossed it. Yeah, uh, and I don't know which border is the worst. If it's you know the California one or the Arizona, I don't know which one is the worst. But uh, uh, I think no matter what, it's never going to be. It's never fun, and it sucks getting across. You know, it just takes so much time. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is Emily Blunt. This is. Uh, Josh Brolin, Benicio Del Toro, and John Barenthal. Daniel Kaluuya is in this. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey Donovan, Victor Garber, who was in Titanic. Uh, yeah, Taylor Sheridan wrote this. And I, this is definitely superior to the to the sequel, um, even though De El Soldado is pretty good. Benicio Del Toro carries that, that one, whereas uh, Emily Blunt, and Benicio Del Toro, that's the reason why they gave him a spinoff. He's really sadistic in this movie. But Emily Blunt really is just a great actress. And, uh, you know, she's in Oppenheimer, so she's being talked about right now. Um, yeah, do you like Sicario? I do. I do. Because I like Emily Blunt, Del Toro, Roland, and Daniel Kaluuya. They're all the four fine bunch of actors. I think they're both, I mean, they're all fantastic in what they do. And it's nice yeah. to see them all together in this movie uh, with a great, great director at the helm. Yeah, the new is, uh, you know, he's just doing the Dune movies right now, but... Um, yeah, so I can't wait for Dune Part 2. I'm excited for that as well. But yeah, he also did Prisoners, which we love, and Enemy, yes, and Arrival, uh, Blade Runner 2049. Love that and one, too. Dune Part 2 comes out later this year, and then he also oh, has a Park. movie that's in development called a rendezvous with Rama. Uh, I think I've heard about that. It's a sci-fi. That's the other sci-fi one he's doing. It's a team of astronauts are sent on a mission to explore a giant interstellar spaceship hurling toward the sun based on, on a novel, but yeah, 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 said, that's not, yeah, that's the one he's doing. Yeah. There's it doesn't have any actors attached to it at the moment. Rendezvous with Rama, which I'm glad that, we get to see him do something else and he's not just going to keep doing the, uh, the dunes at the moment. No. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Sicario, I think it's a, uh, it's a really good. Before I go on to my number two, what's your opinion on arrival? Uh, it, yeah, I, um, it's good. It's really good. I, I thought Amy Adams did a really good job and I think, um, sort of the the meaning behind it all is is really good and and the way you know we kind of see intercuts from what the ending actually is throughout the entire movie i thought that was really smart but uh yeah it, it didn't really you know grasp a hold of, i'm more i like uh you know like sicario is very practical and you know yeah. i don't i don't um <clears throat> yeah uh, it's good it's definitely you know i think maybe i like annihilation a little bit better yeah i get that uh, doesn't look like Sicario won any Fleming. No, it sadly didn't. But I'm assuming that if Doom Part 2 is a success, maybe Danny Filner might get nominated for Best Director. Yeah. 7.6 on IMDb with a budget of $30 million. Worldwide gross is 84.9. And 92% on Rotten Tomatoes with an 85% audience score. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, I don't think it was nominated for any Oscar. No, I nominated don't. for three Oscars. Let me check here. Uh, 
What was it? Uh, that was score, it maybe? Three for Deacons. Yes. And then score and sound editing. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, if Deacons is there, he's getting nominated. Yeah. All right. I have a feeling I know what's coming next. What do we got? Uh, we got a MCU movie. Oh, nice. And who better to do a spy story with than Captain America, which is my number two, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Nice. One of my favorites. Yes. So in this movie, Captain America joins Black Widow and Falcon to uncover the conspiracy that S.H.I.E.L.D. are actually Hydra, while also facing his best friend who is now a trained assassin working for Hydra. Yes. Uh, this was where we got to see Bucky for the first time? Second time. What was the first one? Uh, the first Captain America. What, at the end credits or something? No, you, you need to watch that movie again. He's in, he's in not the majority of the movie. Of the first one? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, this is your second Samuel L. Jackson movie. No, uh, oh, Samuel L. Jackson. This is the fifth movie he's been. You need to watch no, no, the no, no, no. On your list. On your oh, list. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Justin. No, it's okay. Uh, but this time as a, as a good guy. Yeah, as a good guy. Uh, Robert Redford's the, the buddy, and uh, he's one of the best MCU villains. Well, he's not supposed to be a baddie. Um, directed by the Russo brothers. This was their first movie. Um, but yeah, starring uh, Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson, Sebastian Stan, Anthony Mackie, Colby Smulders, Haley Atwell, who was in Mission Impossible. Yeah. Uh, Frank Grillo, Stan Lee, of course. Yeah. Uh, I would say this is one of the better trilogies that are in the Marvel Universe, is the yes. Captain America trilogy. Yes, yes. So have you been watching Secret Invasion, the new uh, Marvel show? I have not. Oh, it, I, it, I, I, huh? oh it's, it, it focuses on uh, the Samuel L. Jackson and the Skrulls. It's quite good, actually. Yeah, probably, I have, best, uh, probably best watch it before the Marvels, just in case. Yeah, we watched the first episode, and then honestly, I forgot all about it. I just forgot that it was even a show until you even brought it up right now. Yeah, because um, nobody else is talking about it either. Like everyone else is all you know, they're always talking about all these other shows. Like, but maybe because pandemic's over, people are for the most part, people are just you know opening up their eyes and saying we don't need to see every TV show about Marvel and every TV show about Star Wars and, and yeah, all this. Because, uh, uh, yeah, we just get fatigued from it all. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. It's Captain America trying to be normal, but then has to team up with Widow to uh, take down the new assassin known as the Winter Soldier. Um, and we see, and we meet Auntie Mackie's character, Falcon, who it will become the new Captain America. That's right. I don't think people can spoil Marvel movies anymore. I mean, it's, you know, those are ones that people rush out to see. And if you don't, that's on you. Yeah, that, I, yeah, that that's my role. If it's, if it's not in cinema anymore, it's fair game. Hmm. Uh, this was one of my favorite uh, sort of villains is the Winter Soldier. Yes. Uh, thought Sebastian Stan did a great job. However, mm -hmm. once it became Captain America and the Winter Soldier, or Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the TV show, he became one of the biggest uh, sort of wussies out there that it totally crushed all of his previous accomplishments in my eyes. Yeah. But 
I'll just go back and watch these these other ones where he's not such a little wuss. He might be better in the Thunderbolts movie. Mm, boy, I hope so. Uh, doesn't have any Fleming awards. No, but did get good. nominated for achievement in visual effects at the Oscars, and is sitting at seven point eight on IMDb, which is a great one. A hundred and seventy million dollar budget with a worldwide gross of seven hundred and fourteen million. Yee, yee, yee. See if the Oscars um, had a stunt category, that would be a good winner. Yeah, they should have a stunt category. And, and Tom Cruise wins every year. <laughs> uh ninety yeah. percent of Rotten Tomatoes with an audience score of ninety two percent. It's not too bad. No. Not too bad at all. <laughs> All right, my number two is we're going down the, a little bit of a different path here, just in only one sense. But um, in the other sense, it's a great spy film. It has a great lead character that makes it engaging throughout and uh, sparked a trilogy and maybe even more. But what we have here is Mike Myers written and starring in Austin Powers, the international man of mystery. Yes, the second uh, film is an honorable mention of mine. Well, I just, I, I love all three of them, and actually Goldmember may be my favorite, uh, but I just picked the first one because it's, you know, we really get a sense of, we got the, the, the origin story to a 007 in a comedic sort of view and i just thought yeah. it was really fun really brilliant came out in 1997 was a huge hit you know it, this is uh, about a world-class playboy and part-time agent from the 60s he emerges 30 years later from uh, a cryogenic state to battle his nemesis dr evil and there's a fun twist about them two in the third one right uh mike myers plays multiple characters including dr evil yes. uh, but we also have michael york elizabeth yeah. hurley yeah uh, mimi rogers and seth yeah. green mindy sterling who yeah. is such a great uh sidekick character she is. uh will will ferrell who's, yeah. who's really funny in this one um but yeah directed by uh jay roach yeah jay who, roach. uh also uh, has directed the campaign dinner for schmucks meet the fockers meet the parents uh austin powers the spy who shagged me yeah uh, zoo radio mystery alaska um uh, trumbo trumbo uh, there, there's i'm bombshell and then bombshell bombshell is uh, probably his best film uh yeah 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 well yeah it's definitely better than dinner for schmucks uh it looks like uh he's in pre-production for an, an untitled margot robbie oceans 11 film and then also is coming out with austin powers 4. right so we will see that uh yeah i love gold member i love spy who shagged me um i think this is a great character for mike myers and so yeah, is dr evil the Graham's the best of the three girls you don't like Beyonce? She's no, love, Cleopatra Cleopatra, and she's I, a whole lot of woman. No, I love Beyonce, but I just love Heather Graham. That was like her. That was like her first movie, right? I uh, think. Boogie Nights was before that movie. Beyonce was in Boogie Nights. No, Heather Graham. Oh, okay, yeah, Heather Graham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, interesting that they made a sequel because the budget was 16.5 million, but the worldwide gross is only 67.7. So it is enough to make another, but it's not like the, the numbers that we've seen from these last sort of spy movies. Yeah. Um, I mean, this movie is ridiculous. It's just, it's stupid humor, but it's really funny and unique. Uh, you know, they do sort of nudity in a fun way. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I just thought it was, it's, it's a great comedy and I, I, it's, interesting when you play a character like he's playing austin powers but he's also playing dr evil and dr evil may be more popular than austin powers overall definitely uh yes but it's sitting at uh, a uh 7.0 on rotten tomatoes doesn't have any fleming awards 
Nope. 73% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 77% audience score. Nice. And I love Mike Myers because of his acting range by playing all these different characters. Yeah. And the best thing Shrek. is that when he's trying to do the British accent, he doesn't try and mock it. He tries to make it as real as he can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like all you did back then was like try to mimic him. So, yeah. It was fun. All right. Well, we know what your number one is. Yes. Uh, let's hear, this. Let's hear it. So. Two movies after your number four. James Bond was an old dog. He couldn't yeah. learn new tricks. <laughs> but when a mad psychopath is after your boss, you're then called back into the field to protect her. And this is James Bond's 23rd installment and Daniel Craig's third movie, and Judy Dench's last movie, Skyfall. Directed by Sam Mendes. Yay. Yeah, James Bond's loyalty to M is tested when her past comes back to haunt her. MI6 comes under attack. 007 must track down and destroy the threat, no matter how personal the cause. Yes. Yeah. Um... This is a fantastic film. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, this is, yeah, your favorite of, of the uh, catalog from Daniel Craig's, and I believe a lot of people's favorite. Yeah, probably um, my favorite Bond film overall as well, since out of the ones I've seen. Yeah, I need to re revisit the, the Pierce ones and then go go all the way back. I've only seen the first, the first two, and then these. I've got one Connery Pierce. left, and then I'm going to try and uh, rewatch all the more ones. Oh, nice. Javier Bardem. Brilliant. The villain in this one. Sadistic and weird. Uh, Ray Fiennes, Albert Finney, Ben Wishaw. Yeah, uh, yeah Sam Mendes, who uh, last year did uh, Empire of Light, right? Empire of Light, yeah. Yeah. Oscar uh, nominated, nominated guy. Winner. For American Beauty, is, American Beauty. You, know, you know, what main directors can say they've won an Oscar for their debut movie? Just him and Kevin Costner are out of the two I can picture in my head. Huh, that's interesting. Not their first go, huh? Yeah, and then have a pretty good career after that yeah uh this movie was nominated and uh, won two oscars nominated for five it was nominated for cinematography of course deacons yeah. again if if you're if it's a deacons movie you will be nominated uh nominated for original score one for uh original song adele uh nominated for sound mixing and then also one for sound editing which is now just one category yes. but also one best original song and sound and stunt team for the flemings yes well skyfall is like to stunt wise you are not going to get better stunts than the james bond movies yeah well the daniel craig james bond movies oh no the pierce brosnan ones have some really fun action scenes but it's not pierce I guess. I guess it's because Daniel is actually doing some of his stunts. Pierce is not. Yeah, yeah, you can tell that it's a body double sometimes. I also love Naomi Harris. She's uh, she's one oh, of she's my so crushes, awesome. and she's so good. Um, uh, really good pick. And yeah, all Bond movies are spy movies, so that is perfect. Why it's your number one budget of two hundred million dollars worldwide gross one point one billion dollars. Uh, over on IMDb, it is a seven point eight rating, ninety two percent on Rotten Tomatoes with an eighty six percent audience score. Good Pretty pick. good. Yeah, good pick from me. I can't wait to hear what your number one is. 
you yeah. normally have either surprises or ones I forgot about. I think it's just ones you forgot about because if you know me, then you know what my number one would be. And actually, I I couldn't pick, so I have a tie, and it's a three way tie because I just love each of them much that they are tied for number one, and it's the Born trilogy, the Born I. The Born Supremacy and the Born Ultimatum. Each one has its own unique individualism that creates perfection. And if you put them all sort of together, you would have probably the ultimate perfect movie. But uh, we'll just start with Born Identity. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, Matt Damon as uh, Jason Bourne. He's picked up by a fishing boat and he's bullet riddled and he's suffering from amnesia and he's trying to regain his memory. Uh, and that's where the movie sort of goes on from there. He, he knows that he's being spied on. He knows that he needs to spy to find, you know, certain things cause he doesn't want to want to get killed. Uh, and yeah, this is directed by Doug Lyman who works with uh, Matt Damon a lot, but also stars, uh, Franca potent, uh, Clive Owen and Chris Cooper, Brian Cox, Adewale, Akinyu, Abjab, Agbahe. Uh, who you know his face, but also Julia Stiles and Walton Goggins. Um, yeah, this uh, this was just like perfectly in my wheelhouse. Came out in two thousand and two, and it became an obsession. Like it, I have multiple different versions of each movie, you know, Blu-ray and DVD, but also like collector's editions and stuff. I mean, I there's there can't be a trilogy that I loved more. Um, again, this is that, that close hand-to-hand -hand combat that really gets me and uh, some stunt work that is just stuff that you have never seen before, but also uh, uh, chase scenes that you just have not seen before. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I love me some born identity. The director, Doug Lyman, also did uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Swingers. Uh, go. He did Jumper. Did you ever see Jumper? No, I didn't, but I've heard, I've heard mixed things. Yeah. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow, which we all love. Uh, he did The Wall, which was a very interesting movie with uh, John Cena, I believe. Um, and then looks like he's coming out with a movie called Justice from this year. And he made a terrible movie called Lockdown. Oh my god, that's right. Pandemic movie. It was like the first one. Oh, he also did Chaos Walking, which came out the same year. That's uh I really enjoyed that movie. It was super weird, but um that's Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. Cool. Uh but yeah, he has a bunch coming up. Looks like uh an un untitled Tom Cruise SpaceX project, which I believe we've all heard about that. Oh, he's doing the new Roadhouse movie. Oh god. Um, he's doing an Everest movie. So there's that. Um, 7.9 on IMDb. $60 million budget. Worldwide gross $214 million. Born Identity is 84% with the 93% on Rotten Tomatoes for the audience. Um, do you know which one you would like? Do you, You've seen all these? I've seen the first three, and I think the Born Ultimatum is the best one. Yeah, so the second one is directed by Paul Greengrass. It's uh, Born Supremacy. Uh, Frank is back. Matt Matt Damon's back, of course. Joan Allen this time. Um, Brian Cox and Julia Stiles. This yeah. time uh, he's ready to move on, but he is framed for a CIA operation gone awry, and he is forced to resume his former life as a trained assassin to survive. I, uh, I Paul Greengrass is a pretty good director. Um, Carl Urban's you, in this film. What'd you say? Carl Urban's in it. Oh yeah, Carl Urban. Uh, and Joan Allen, uh, who's a really good actress. Yeah, she's very, very good. Um, Paul Greengrass also did uh, News of the World, which was great with Tom Hanks oh, a couple years ago. Captain Phillips. I need to see that one. United 93 and also Green Zone. Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like this, right? It's just born, but in a, in a war, uh, in a war zone. Yeah. Uh, who else is in there? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, budget, uh, 75 million worldwide gross, 290 million and supremacy is 82%, uh, rotten tomatoes with a 90% audience score. And then lastly, your favorite the born ultimatum, tons of fun, uh, came out in 2007. Also directed by Paul Greengrass. This one co-starring Edgar, uh, Edgar Ramirez. Yeah. Who's a really good actor. But then, yeah. Uh, yes. Also yes. added yes. David Strait Theron. Yeah. Um, one, uh, Daniel Brule as well. This one won three Oscars. I didn't even know that. Let me, let's check them out. And I know. Best, best, editing, best sound editing and best mixing. Film editing, sound mixing, yeah, sound editing. Oh, it also won two BAFTAs, best editing and best sound. Look at that. Well, yeah, I mean, these, what they did in this with all the crashing and the car chasing and stuff is pretty remarkable. So I understand why they had to have so much sound mixing and editing. Um, and uh, yeah. Paddy Considine's in this and a uh, person who was in my number one, Albert Finney. Albert Finney, yes. Uh, this one, 8.0 on uh, IMDb with a budget of 110 million worldwide gross was 444 million. Uh, 92% of Rotten Tomatoes with a 91% uh, audience score. The one after this was The Born Legacy with uh, somebody who was on your list, Jeremy Renner. And then uh, the fifth one that came out was Jason Bourne, uh, which nobody talks about ever. Is it that bad? I don't think it's that bad. It's just uh, it wasn't. It didn't feel like a boring movie, you know. But Alicia Vikander's in it, who we all love. Yeah, what's the Jeremy Renner one like? He it, it, it's it's better than Jason Bourne because he is trying to be Bourne. He's just not Matt Damon, you know. Like he does some sick stuff in there. Yeah. I mean, in, in this the story of of Born, and he's not born in the movie, but the story of Born, you know, if you read the books, is that he's an old man and he's still badass. Like, so he is supposed to grow older and and still do these things, uh, you know. Um, so I get it. And Jason Bourne, he is older, but you know, he should still be kicking ass. I'll, I'll get. I, I just think it became more too much CIA and less less Born. Yeah, I get that. But well, there you go. That's the list. I can't wait possible. to recommend today's movie. Oh, cool. Let's let's run down. Uh, let's run our down our movies real quick. I had Mission Impossible Fallout number five, Casino Royale number four, Sicario number three, Austin Powers International Man and number Inter, International Man of Mystery at number two, and then the Bourne trilogy, Identity, Supremacy, and Ultimatum at number one. Lovely. My number five was Ghost Protocol. My number four was Kingsman Secret Service. My number three was Tenet. My number two was Captain America the Winter Soldier. And my number one was Skyfall. Yeah, Tenet uh, also ran for me. Yes, I also um, had uh, Tink Taylor Soldiers by and North by Northwest, as honorable mentions as well. Uh, that's good. Uh, Bridge of Spies. Yeah. The Grey Man wasn't bad from last year. That was really good. Argo, Academy Award winning movie. Yes. Uh, I enjoyed the 355. I know nobody else did. <laughs> um, Hannah was good with uh, Sir Sharon and Sir Sharon and uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Um, uh, Munich, of course. Munich's great. Uh, and yeah, Tom Cruise is also an American maid and then Atomic Blonde. Yeah, and there's probably some old 60s ones out there as yeah, well. Definitely. All right, what is your movie of recommendation? Well, sadly, I couldn't, I haven't had the time to watch Barbenheimer yet till it's all selling out and I've got like a big stuff going on. But I'm hoping to see Barbie over the weekend when I go to Plymouth on holiday. But. I watched today for the first time Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Oh, yes. Which I've also recommended before. So tell us about it. 
I loved, I loved it. I loved it. I thought uh, it was nice seeing Di Ritchie do something different. And this is a story that that starts off as one thing, then becomes another story, and then becomes another story. And it's just well done. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's better than Operation... Rue de Guerre, oh, Operation Fortune, which is so crazy. Two movies in one year, and like one was probably going to be on people's worst, and then some, and then the other one could be on people's people's best. So yeah, uh, very very interesting. What'd you see that on? Uh, Prime. Prime. Saw it on Prime. Nice. Yes, it's an Amazon um, original in the, in the UK. So if you're in the UK and you have Amazon Prime, I highly recommend you watch it. If you would love Guy Ritchie and more movies and Jackson Hall, sure. And there are some other good supporting actors in this. Yeah. One from a certain Amazon show, Anthony Starr. Yeah. And Johnny Lee Miller. Yeah. And Jakey's good. And Jake Gyllenhaal, yes, he's the main guy, and Dar Salim. Dar Salim. He's also really good. Very good. Yeah, there's a movie called Kandahar that's out right now that uh, is pretty similar. Pretty, pretty similar. Uh, that one's starring Gerard Butler. So, yeah. there, there you go. He'll never be an Oscar winner. Gerard Butler? No. Never? I can't see him being an Oscar winner. What about when he's like uh, Anthony Hopkins' age and he's like, I don't care about looking good anymore. I just want to do good acting. You don't think he'll do it then? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Well, I'm conflicted because I did see – I saw. I didn't see Barbenheimer. I saw Oppen Harvey, which means I saw Oppenheimer first and then Barbie. But I am a union member, a Screen Actors Guild, and part of the SAG AFTRA, and yeah. we're not allowed to really promote or talk about movies that are out right now. So I will not do that. But I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about since we are talking spy movies, and this movie came out, you know, uh, before they went on strike. I'll talk about Mission Impossible. Dead Reckoning Part One, uh, yeah, which so the stunts are when amazing. When are you allowed to talk about Bob and I with them? When it when it's over. Okay. They're, they're, they they are going to be the last. They did say that we can review movies, but uh, I'm still going to stand against doing new movies after I'm going to I'm doing Bar- Barbie came out today. I'm doing Oppenheimer tonight, and uh, from then on out, anything that's new, I won't I won't be doing uh, reviews for them until. Until the strike's over. Oh, I'll uh, give you a chance to check to, to check out the Fleming Ward films you missed. I'm gonna check I'm gonna watch a lot of old movies, that's for sure. Or or review old movies. Um, you know, uh, we we shouldn't be going to the theater or, or you know but we we can still do this, can't we? Well yeah, because we it's it's never about a new movie, you know. It's always it's always about old stuff. Yeah, but Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning is awesome. It definitely sets up a part two. Uh, uh, Haley Atwell is our, a new character that is, you know, pretty badass. She's a pickpocket, and um, there are some corny jokes. And Tom Cruise is just amazing. And uh, you know, when you have, like I've said before, Top Gun Maverick, when you have Tom Cruise's name above that title, it's always going to be good. And Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 this is definitely a fun, fun film. Um, but again, I don't think it's better than Fallout. Uh, but I, Dead Reckoning Part 2 could be the best of the franchise because of the setup that we have for it. So yes. I'm looking forward to Dead Reckoning Part 2. Uh, but yeah, everyone uh, supports SAG and the Writers Guild. It's, uh, yes, I'll do. It's it's the reason why you and I are here right now. It's because of movies and because of the actors and because of the writers. So they need to be supported. 
so you and I can continue to talk movies and watch movies and and be be thankful and grateful that we that we are, you know. Definitely, definitely. Because I have been worrying about you because of the whole actor strike. I appreciate it. I luckily, luckily, luckily am working at a studio that is non-union, not as an actor, but as a, as an AD. So. Uh, I'm not stepping on any toes or affecting anybody that uh, is is being affected. These are non-union scripts being written and non-union actors that are acting. So um, I uh, I still stand with my union brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you're going on holiday over the weekend. So when the next time that we see each other, what do you want to do next? Oh, uh, since you have to catch up with old movies, uh, let's do the uh, 2000s winners of the Fleming Awards. 2000s winners. So they're the best film winners. The best film, best picture. Yeah. So is that starting in oh all of two, so 2000 to 2010? Yeah, 2000, 2009. So those movies are Gladiator, okay. yeah. L Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, yeah. City of God, yeah. Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, yeah. Million Dollar Baby, yeah. V for Vendetta, I love uh, that movie. Children of Men, love that movie. <laughs> Hot Fuzz. We have to put a comedy V1 in there. Yeah, uh, The Dark Knight. Yeah. And up, up, yeah. Are we ranking them? Yes, ranking them from a uh, our, our least favorite okay. to favorite of the ten. Okay, that's fun. All right, that sounds good. We'll do that. And uh, yeah, so uh, can't promote myself, but go ahead and promote yourself, Rob, in case somebody just happens to stumble upon this video somewhere. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to keep watching YouTube videos of me or other episodes, uh, check me out uh, on YouTube. <coughs> and if you want to vote on the Fleming Awards, uh, join my Facebook group. Uh, we're currently doing the 50 seasons uh, now, and we developed a new system over Google Forms where we vote for nominations first, and then the top five of the nominations become our nominees, and then you vote on the nominees, and boom, you got your winners. I think we'll do the 2023 Fleming Awards this way. I love it. Yes, well, That's we great. can vote on the 2023 ones. You would have said vote more movies then. So now you're not a big watcher of classic movies. That's right. Cool. Um, all right. Well, that's right. all good and fun. Go check yes. them out. Tell us your favorite spy movies down yes. below. Comment, Comment like, like, subscribe. subscribe. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Yes, we'll do Until this again soon. Until then. Bye, Justin. Bye, Rob.